Hi everyone, um, I want to make a quick video of something that I made uh, that I'll share soon. Uh, I think like in a medium post because I don't really have a, a place where I write on the internet. So there was this brand called Resivot, I believe, uh, that released recently uh, a product called the Power Ranger, which I, I seemed I, I was very interested in. And it's basically a power extender for uh, your typical SX70 cameras. Uh, I think they also worked for the with the SLRs for Mint. Um, so after after seeing the product, I basically found out that um, Polaroids have like. This SS70 is have these two holes on, on, on the base plate that um, give you access to the contacts, to some contacts actually. There were, I believe, text contacts uh, used by Polaroid to test their cameras after they were probably assembled. So you could still access uh, this. So, yeah, Resivot basically acts on that. Uh, and from what I've seen from their product, they have these little pins, which I also was able to find some on AliExpress. Uh, that connect to the camera and they are spring loaded. So this, sorry for not, the camera is not focusing. Oh, no, anyway. So th they are spring loaded, uh, so that it's easy to make contact with, with some surface, uh, which the depth you are not really familiar with. So I got some of these. Um, what I got here is basically a little 3D uh, case, 3D printed case. I've been mandling a bit with different prototypes, uh, moving parts around to um, to try. And this is the top. So basically, to try to fit all the components in a snug way and in a very minimalistic way. So my intention, you see, um, was to not to be to be very invasive on a camera. Uh, I did look inside the camera, but this thing is really well made. There's no space to put anything anywhere. Uh, kudos to Polaroid on that. They're past, of course. Um, but anyway, I'm a, I'm, I think I managed to make a really small fit. This little, maybe the pins are too big. I have different sizes. These are seven millimeter high, uh, and then I have some here that are six, and some that are five. I might try them later when I have some skin on it, actually, uh, to see if it stays leveled and it doesn't do a lot of tension. Uh, I'm actually I'm not using anything to attach. Um, nothing physical, let's say, that, that's damaging or perforating the case. I'm using magnets. There's a group of two here, another group of two here. Um, what I've done with this print wrong is that actually the housing for the magnets is not so good, so I need to increase the space a little bit. Um, and basically at the heart, and this is another thing I randomly found, and then I was like, oh, I can use this. Um, because as uh, so Polaroid batteries have six volts, and I saw people testing with four triple A's, which is four point eight. Well, let's say go to five when they if they are charged or if they are new. And I found this uh, thing from Other Fruit. Uh, Other Fruit is like a, a, a bro little a hacker board brand that makes little uh, boards for Arduino and Shield and Raspberry Pi and just little components like a USB. This guy's USB-C board here. So I have this thing called the Power Boost that gets a LiPo battery, a 3.7 uh, LiPo battery. There's many shapes and sizes of these going around and converts it to a 5 uh, uh, volt output. So the, uh, the battery goes into a connector here. I remove the connector and there was a charging port here. Uh, and that has to do with the space available because I wanted to make the case as slim as possible. Uh, the transformer itself of this unit is still a bit too high and it's not letting me close the case 100%. So I need to change a bit my design and print it again. Uh, so basically, yeah, here there was a connector. It's gone. The battery goes in there. There's a, yeah, there used to be a USB-C, a USB-B micro, sorry, USB micro port here. So they would charge, but I wanted to be more future-proof. So there's another uh, breakout board with um, other fruit breakout board. Breakout boards are the name of these things. Uh, with a USB-C, so that's future-proof. Um, you can turn the board on and off. The off, I've heard, still consumes uh, a little amount of milliamps, so it's probably slowly discharged the battery. But there's a little switch here, and if you see, if I turn on the switch, 
board comes on, there's a power LED here. There's a, a low battery voltage. I think if when it drops on a 3.2 LED here. And then there are two charging LEDs here, uh, one red and one green when it's charged. So you can show you that quickly. Um, so my intention as well is to try to use some light pipes. I'll put the clear plastic on top to locate um, where the LEDs are to make dots and then make holes in a case. I have like one millimeter light, uh, light pipes uh, so that I, I have the information available outside of the box uh, when I use it. So if I plug it in, now it's charging. If it's fully charged, it will be green. I can turn it off and it's still charging. And that's why I didn't connect this switch directly to the battery because uh, then it, if I turn it off, I wouldn't be able to charge the battery unless the whole thing was on. And with the, the built-in function that turns on, off the board, I'm still able to charge it. Um, so that's a little uh, trade-off there. I think I'm talking a bit too much, but if you know what I'm talking about, it's fine. If not, you can ask questions. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically it. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, I can use this. I bought a second one to fiddle with because I have another one which is really special to me and I didn't want to uh, 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 damage it. So I've been using this one to prototype. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to make the modifications. And then in the future, see, uh, there's a little cable mismanagement or management, if you can say, happening here. Um, so I might reduce this length um, because because 3D prints is 3D prints are a bit rough. I can close I can close the lid. I can just show you actually. I can close the lid just by friction, friction friction itself. But uh, I think that might not be ideal uh, for future proof. Not that I'm making this a product, but if I want this to last a bit more, uh, I probably need to. Uh, look at that as well. Uh, so because probably plastic will wear out to the point that uh, the case will stop closing. As you see, it doesn't close completely because there's some yeah tension happening here with uh, in the middle. Oh, I did go a bit further down, but it doesn't go completely. Uh, this 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 front part shouldn't close the contact completely, and it's not doing that. Um, I still might tweak a bit. The door looks a bit too on top of the port, but let's see, no, chargers, okay, connects well, there we go, so basically this is it, uh, if we put us all on the Polaroid to see, how does it look, and it wiggles a bit around, the contacts are so thin, uh, that there's some you know, give, of course if it's through the skin, maybe it will be more accurate, when you assemble, um, another thing to note, uh, I made some cones to put on, on, the, on top of the pins, but such a small print, it's not really accurate. Um, so my idea was to put the cones so that they guide, uh, they guide the pins that are coming out here better into the contact holes. But um, yeah, that's a subject matter for later. Um, so like so, we make a little you see a little yeah, pyramid shape cone cone shape so that they they find their slot better um, yeah oops there we go very small stuff as well here hard easy to lose um yeah so let, let's see it in action as well might as well um this is off yeah, i need to somehow as well indicate what is the on off position for this switch um on the 3d print somehow yeah, I also had to design a 3D print in, in mind of printing because one of the ideas, of course, was to use like there are some tripod mounts that grab on the Polaroid here on the side, uh, but then printing printing these these housings for the boards and and the grab the hooks that would grab on the side of the Polaroid it doesn't make for a good printing angle because you would have to print like this and things things would deform um, anyway. Uh, let's show the thing in action. Uh, yeah, I'm making some video to show this around if someone is interested. Because I, I pretend to, I intend to release it, 
like the 3D print and uh, what materials have I used. Sorry about that, my girlfriend asking about what am I doing. Exactly, what am I doing? So there we go. Uh, film is loaded. This is in and it's not turned on. I'll now put it on and the film will come out. There we go. You can have a look. It's not that invasive. Of course, it's still a thing hanging there and I guess it's more designed to put it on and off only when you want to shoot it and not to be permanent. Um, oh, machine. You can see the pins. Oh, the pins and the, and the magnets kind of work. They allow it to go down further. Uh, but that's a good thing about having the pins. They can have contact with different heights. So they're already having contact like this, but it can be pushed further down. But yeah, it's not very invasive. Uh, you don't have. So I also want to make a template that you put on top of the the, the ladder, and it tells you where exactly the holes are, so that you just pin that little bit of the ladder, and this is, that's it, you're ready to go if you printed and assembled one of these, so that um, there's, to, to the camera itself, there's the least amount of invasive procedures, let's say, <laughs> and that's why I actually bought another one to be able to do that, um, so that my main one later, which is actually an SLR 670 nowadays, um, doesn't get very much damaged. All right.